Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Many moons ago, about eight of them, I had quite a lot of people ask me how to make this little storage caddy. This is one that I use at the shop, so you would have said it in my shop videos. And it's just a little tiny caddy that I keep that I keep all my clips in. I'm going to show you finally today how to make this storage caddy. I'm going to modify it slightly. This is one that I made at a sewing retreat about 10 or 12 years ago. We're going to make this a little bit bigger because I need something a little bit bigger for myself. You can make this in any size that you like. I'm going to show you how to cut your fabric to make a hexagon. So this is using a product called Peltex. It's quite a stiff stabilizer. It's fusible on one side. I believe you might be able to get it fusible on both sides. And I think it's equivalent is Deco Voil. I'm not sure. But just use any really stiff interfacing. You don't want something that's going to flop down. Stick around and I'll show you how to make a larger version of this little caddy and how to create a hexagon shape. Come along. To make our big hexagon, we want two pieces of fabric that are six inches square. Fold one of them in half and you can just finger press that. Now you want to have a ruler that's got a 30 degree line on there. You can see the 30 degree line along here. There's also a 45 and a 60. This is quite an old ruler, but it'll still do the job. We've got the 30 degree line just there, which is going to line up with the folded edge of your square. So that's folded perfectly in half. Line that over the top of your fold line and bring the corner of the ruler up to meet the corner of your fabric. Keep that line across there nice and straight. Make a cut from the corner and then we'll repeat that for this side. And if you're ambidextrous, you can just cut straight across here. I'm not. I'm going to flip that around. Keep this edge nicely lined up. Line up that 30 degree mark against the fold of your fabric again. Open this out and we don't quite have a hexagon. We've got an elongated hexagon here. So where this fold is here, rather than taking the short edge of the fabric here, we'll now take one of these longer hexagon edges, bring that across to the other and line up the straight edges. So you need to have that nice and straight. You can line your ruler up and trim off that excess. You can use your 30 degree line and just line that up again. And that way you're making sure that you're getting a really nice 30 degree hexagon and just make sure your edges line up properly and you trim off that excess. Flip it over so you've got a nice straight edge across there and across the top and you can use the 30 degree line if you like or you can just use the guide where that piece of fabric is chopped off. There is your hexagon. So you've got a nice even hexagon all the way around. We had started off with a six inch square. So you can see that that's six inches going across there. The sides of the hexagon measure three inches. So each side of the hexagon will measure half of the size of the square that you'd started off with. So we'll do exactly the same thing for the next piece of fabric and we can set those two aside. Now we need some Peltex or something stiff. So um, this is a really nice thick stabilizer. It's almost like cardboard. One side is fusible, the other side is not. So we want that to be a little bit smaller than our hexagons. I want to have a half inch fold over. You can go with a quarter of an inch if you like, but there is a bit of thickness to this Peltex. So I'm going to go a half an inch fold over for my hexagons, which means that it's got a half inch seam allowance on each side. So it needs to be one inch narrower than the square that we did before. So if we did a six inch square, we want a five inch square now and we need two of these. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing. So it doesn't matter what size you have your squares, fold this up exactly the same way. We'll still get a hexagon. They're just going to be different sizes. I've got the fold just there. Bring up the raw edges, line up that 30 degree line that you see there on the edge of the Peltex, on the edge of the fold and carefully cut that out. 
flip that around so we've still got the fold here open that out and then take the longer side of the hexagon over to the other longer side and we'll trim that down like we did with the fabric there's that little bit that needs to be cut off when you use a rotary cutter you should always cut away from yourself and you shouldn't have your hand down flat on the cutting on your ruler either because you can't get out of the way if you slip always cut away and make sure your tools are sharp. So there's your hexagon, which is going to be one inch smaller all the way around. And that'll give us a half inch seam allowance on all six sides. Repeat that for the other one. So with the fusible side, if you've got a fusible product, take that to the iron and press the fabric onto the Peltex. What we're going to do is glue the side or you can press it. So you can just fold the sides over and press it onto the inside. This is a Soline glue pen. I've been using these for years and years. I use them for English paper piecing quite often. With a glue pen, it doesn't matter if you use another brand. There's lots of other brands around, but you don't want to use those um, craft glue pens there. You want to stick with one of these fabric glue pens. Run the glue just lightly across the edge of your fabric fold your fabric over and press it in place and then continue on all the way around fold the corner over and then continue I'm not pressing hard at all it's just like putting lipstick on it's probably even lighter than that and it's not critical if your sides aren't exactly the same all the way around there is plenty of overhang allowed on this these Soline glue pens are removable it's not a permanent glue you can reposition it and then glue it down again and you can use it for paper piecing so that you can remove your paper templates okay we've got two hexagons both the same size and they're ready to be put together now we need to do the sides so remember that we used a six inch piece of fabric to make the square and then we trimmed then we cut the edges on this but on the Peltex we made it five inches so the side of our hexagon is going to be two and a half inches across not three inches because we've got the edges folded under what we need now are some shapes two and a half inches wide at the base and then you can make them as long as you like so our Peltex needs to be two and a half inches wide across the bottom and our fabric needs to be three and a half inches wide across the bottom. Because we've got two hexagons we need to have 12 of these. After you've cut your hexagons we're going to cut some Peltex into squares and two other fabrics into squares. So what the plan is is to have a piece of Peltex on each piece of fabric. They'll be butted together and then we'll have opposing colors on the other side and then when we do the next two we can do the same thing and the walls of our uh, container can be orange paisley orange paisley and have them alternated on opposite sides as they go around the hexagon double check the measurement of your hexagon here you've got a two and a half inch finished edge so our squares our Peltex squares need to be two and a half inches in square that will be the same distance across the side of your hexagon we want 12 of those we want to have 12 squares and we need to allow the fold over for the seam allowance on the underneath of the squares so our squares are two and a half inches in Peltex and our fabric will be three and a half inches square so cut out six of one color and six of another color in your fabric squares at three and a half inches and 12 Peltex pieces at two and a half inches when we put this together it's up to you to decide whether you want to have a curved edge like this or if you just want to have it straight all the way around or perhaps you want it straight with a little bit of a triangle cut out on the sides to make it a little bit easier I'm not going to round the edges I'm going to have straight edges on the top of mine but I am going to trim the corners so if you like you can just trim two corners off your Peltex here and I will just do a half inch on either side or one centimeter and trim that off on your Peltex on two sides and also on all of your fabric you can take a few layers of Peltex and cut these out at once just use the previous layer as a template and repeat for the rest. Our Peltex will sit nicely over the top and we can evenly fold over all of the edges. When you finish pressing the Peltex onto your fabric, grab your glue stick again. When you're actually folding the straight corners over, run the glue along, take the corner and actually fold that over like this. And then you can fold the next one over and then fold the edges over. That way it'll sit nice and flat on the corners here 
and you won't have any of these frayed edges poking out. And there's our finished shape, which will attach to our hexagon. So we'll have all of these shapes attached to the sides of our hexagon and we'll just be alternating the colors and they will sit up like that. So we can repeat that for the rest of these fabrics. Once you've glued all the edges down on your side shapes, we can put them together back to back. So take opposing colors, place them together like that, and then we can just clip them together and we'll stitch all the way around. Grab your glue stick, press the two shapes together. That will help prevent the shapes from shifting as you're stitching them together on the machine. Pop a clip in place on all the sides and we can take this to the sewing machine and stitch the two shapes together one eighth of an inch all the way around all the sides. So we'll do that on all of the shapes and we'll also do the same on the hexagons as well. So you can just run some glue around that very very lightly, press it together and we'll stitch the sides down on the hexagon as well. Okay let's take all of these to the machine. Now you may notice that I'm not on my regular machine. So this is the first project I'm going to be doing on this machine. I'm going to be giving it a test run and just see what I think of it basically. So let's see what we think of it. Okay let's go. There's our first one stitched together. It's a little bit dark in this corner of my room at the moment. I'm waiting for an electrician to come and then I'll have some nice bright lights overhead. So we'll do the same for all of the little ones and then we'll repeat that for the hexagon. Take your hexagon and one of your walls and we're going to place a straight edge onto the side of your hexagon. Doesn't matter which side you use, we're going to be alternating these colors. So this will just go face to face on the hexagon like that and we'll start sewing from the center layers. You've got two layers of the hexagon here and we want to whip stitch this layer here to this layer here, so the inside layers. Rather than starting right on the very edge here, come up here, we don't need to knot our thread, just come up about a quarter of an inch or half an inch inside the corner. Leave a tail, so we've got a tail that's probably a couple of centimeters or an inch. Loop the thread just to the back of that tail and then we're going to stitch, whip stitch the inner pieces. Come under that bit of thread and what we're doing is we're creating, we're training that thread to come over to the, to my right. So that loop over the top We'll force that piece of thread to come over to my right. You don't want to pull it too tight at this stage. Now, that you, now you can just loop straight over the top, bring the needle up on the inner layers only and then you can start pulling that taut and your thread, this tail isn't going to go anywhere and then you won't have a knot sticking out on your fabric. Keep going till we get to the end there. Once you've reached the corner, you can start sti whip stitching all the way up to this corner here. Once you get to the opposite corner, you can just stitch through those two layers again. Draw the thread until you have a little bit of a loop just there. So you can see that loop there. Bring the needle up through that loop once and then bring it up again and that will create a knot. Pull it taut and then you've got a knot. And I'll do that one more time just on the corner. Go through the loop, constantly getting tangled up and through the loop one more time and that'll knot that end. So that's nice and secure. Take the next piece of fabric and we're going to put that in this position here. So it's up to you if you want to have all orange walls on the inside and all green walls on the outside, you can do that. I'm going to stagger my wall, so I'm going to have orange, green, orange, green and go around like that. And I've still got my thread attached here. Place my green wall to the green base and continue stitching. So on the corner there, we can secure that with a couple of knotted stitches. So go through the loop a couple of times and I'll do that one more time. And then I'll start whip stitching the inside layers again. 
Now, the other thing I want to mention is that when you're stitching these layers together, you're just picking up the thread of fabric on the very edge. You don't need to stitch straight through all the layers of the Paltex. That's too much on your fingers and you don't need to dig in that much into your fabric. So you really only just want to pick up the very edge of your fabric. It's a lot smoother and it gives plenty of support. Once you've finished this one, you'll take the next one and build all six walls and then we'll start putting the sides together. Okay, once you've got all your side bits put on, it's time to start building the walls. So we're going to close up the walls on the side here. I've still got my thread attached to the last wall that I had. And what you want to do here is just bring two walls together and then start whip stitching. Being a Paltex, and I think its equivalent might be Decovoil, it's quite a stiff cardboard-like product, but you can stitch through it and it goes back to its flat shape. Bring the two edges together of the wall. It'll help make it easier for, for you to stitch the sides together. And again, we're going to use the inside, the two walls that are facing each other here. They're the layers that we're going to stitch together. So just come up on the bottom and stitch. And at the bottom, give it a couple of good stitches just to secure it. And then you can start whip stitching all the way to the top. When you get to this section here, do the uh, loop it and put a couple of threads through that loop to knot it. And then you'll stitch back this way a little bit to secure it. So I'm at the top there. I'm just going to loop the thread through a couple of times. The reason you have to do it twice is because it won't actually make a knot if you only use it, do it the once. So loop that through twice and then come back and do a few more stitches this way. Loop the thread again and that's secured that in place. And then we'll just get rid of this thread by stitching into the fabric and then just coming out a little bit further on. And then you can just trim that thread off. So there is our first wall done. Now we can go and do all of the others. It's up to you which end you want to start with. Uh, I think it's probably just as easy to start at the bottom end. That way it's not going to be skewed if you accidentally move your fabric at the top. So I'd start at the base and start stitching to the top edge again. So I'll quickly go and do those. I won't quickly go and do those, it'll take me a little while. <laughs> I'll go and stitch that together now. And then the job's done. There we go, the sides have all been stitched together and this is completely finished. So it's a really cute little, very sturdy little um, basket to put whatever you like. I'm going to use this to put my clips in. So I've, I've been just been using this old milk glass bowl. And now I can go and buy some more clips. Yay! <laughs> So this will be fantastic for my clips. I actually wanted something bigger than this bowl in my room. Thank you to all of those that have been asking me over the past few months to make it. I finally got around to doing it. Made it a little bit bigger than the original one. So you can actually make a whole heap of these in different size increments and make them stackable. Something that I might consider doing one of these days. Might look cute in my room. So there you go. You can use these little baskets for clips. You could make really big hexagons and use, a, use this as a bread basket. Again, if you had a really big hexagon, you could use it to put your cutting tools, your pens, all sorts of things in your craft room and at the dining table for some nice bread or even some candy and chocolate. I hope you've enjoyed this project. This is the hexagon storage caddy, suitable for anything that you like. Now, I just might mention, you can actually turn this the other way around. So because I've used Paltex and it's quite flexible, if you feel that you don't want your unstitched edges seen, you can gently turn this the other way around. 
and then you'll see your whip stitching on the outside. What that does is that actually creates a tighter space on the inside as well. So I'm, I might actually leave that exactly as it is. But anyway, you can use it either way you like. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a good little afternoon project that you can do by hand. The whole thing can be done by hand or you can do a little bit by machine and the whip stitching by hand. I'm going to find a spot in my new room for this. Catch you next time.